Brilliant. Oh, that release must be awesome. It can't <laughs> be a celebration. Yeah. And then you look back and you go, what was it doing? Because <laughs> that's what they'll be thinking. I can't believe I stood on the table. But all that pressure and everyone talking about you all the time just to be able to get across the line. Yeah. It just must be a sensational feeling. Oh, it, it, it's fantastic. It's a relief. It's kind of strange because you, you initially, when you initially when the whistle goes, the elation, and then you have the release. Yeah. And then you start thinking about it, and then you just get the buzz again. I bet. I bet. It must be Fantastic. awesome. Let's get more reactions, shall we, to England's victory with Alexis and Julie. Thanks, guys. Well, Wembley has quieted down a little bit, but it was pandemonium just a few moments ago because it very much came home. Football did come home. Leave it to the ladies to take care <laughs> of business as usual. Right, Jules? But, I mean, it took them extra time against Germany, a very formidable opponent. You know, some probably said they were the better team going yeah. into this one overall. Um, but still, uh, this matchup between two absolute giants of this tournament, it delivered. Oh, it absolutely did. And you think of, you go back to the game and England goes up a goal and you knew with what, 10, 12 minutes left, Germany was going to equalize because they always do. Yep. They've never lost a final <laughs> at a European championship, which in itself, that stat is incredible. Um, but I have to give it to England because I did think after the first extra time period that they looked flat. England mm -hmm. looked tired. They were stretching for things. And then they come out of that second extra time period and they looked better. And then all of a sudden, Chloe Kelly, another substitute for England after we saw the Tooney goal, which was fantastic, <laughs> um, really turned the game on its head. And then they were able to close it out. And what a moment in this stadium with all the pressure, having never won a major championship if you're England, to do it at home in front of almost 90,000 in Wembley. I, I, I honestly, I felt like blessed to be a part of this telecast. I was like, this was, I was so lucky to be here. Yeah, massively emotional mm. day. You know, we had Emma Hayes who said this is what yeah. she's waited for her entire life to see this kind of response for it. And I mean, a very special match as well. You could see the girls, I spoke to a couple of them after in our flash interviews and they barely could find the words. Mm. They were just kind of like, is this really happening with to us right now? And the one who really could find the words was Serena Vigman. Of course, she's been here before with the Netherlands and now with England. And how much is it Serena Vigman and what she's done with this Lionesses team? And how much is it just with this absolute power squad and deep yeah. squad that they have? That's a great question. You've always had the talent, I yeah. think, in England in terms of depth and players, and especially with this group. The question was always, could you bring in someone that stabilizes that? Mm. And I think as we've seen with past managers, maybe not the most stabilizing of factors. And with Serena, what you heard every player talk about, and we heard every Dutch player also talk about yeah. when she was with the Netherlands, is she brings this calmness and this serenity and this confidence, most importantly. And that's exactly what you need as a host nation. There's so much attention and hype and emotion around this moment yes. that, I mean, go back to the Spain game, the quarterfinal, when they got outplayed off the pitch for mm -hmm. a good 75 minutes of that game. And you get to that moment in a game, and I know this as the host in 1999, and you start, we did the same thing against Germany in a quarterfinal. You start to panic almost. Like, yeah. this can't you be the, the end. Pressure a bit yeah, more. this can't be the end of us, this quarterfinal, because the tournament's not going to go on without us. And yet, she brings a calm and confidence. And I think. It showed because this England team, as talented as they are, stayed steady even when Germany came back to equalize in this game today. It's truly amazing to see because even Emma Hayes said she doesn't know how she sits just in the dugout. She sits. She's like, is something wrong with her? Because I would be out there just like, <laughs> come on, getting stuck into it now. Of course, if we look at it from the German yeah. perspective, um, they started the day with probably the worst news possible in that their talisman, uh. Alexandra Pop, who has just been outstanding. And even before we were talking about how she probably would be the difference today and tip the scales to Germany. I mean, we can look back on everything in retrospect. We can probably say if, buts, maybes, but how much of a difference do you think she would have made today? Oh, enormous, because she would have been on the, the end of all those set pieces yeah. on every cross. I mean, six goals, co-leads the tournament with Beth Mead, and that was missing. That front fight, that bite, um, they absolutely missed her. And then on top of that, you had Claire Boulle, who's yeah. also another forward who has been great in this tournament. She was out for COVID. And I think when you miss those two, they just didn't have enough up front mm. um, to to actually finish England off in the end because they go and equalize. But I think Pop would have made – and I'm heartbroken for her because yeah. she's come back from injury and she missed the last two years because of injury, 31 years old. She probably doesn't have another Euros in her. 
to actually get injured the day before. It turns Practicing out, penalties yeah. is what she told us. Yeah, and, w and no one knew that until they were in warm-up, and yeah. then all of a sudden she's on the team sheet, and then she's gone. So I that was heartbreak for them. Well, like I said, she did tell us that, you know, she was practicing penalties, and that's exactly how um, she got injured. And England and Germany in penalties is definitely no new thing. The fact that that's where their mind was, you know, you, Ian Dark, and myself were kind of, asking why didn't Germany just kind of play for that towards the end? Why did they continuously yeah. just go after it? Did they miss something there? I, I do think so. We talked about that on the telecast that Germany dominated that yeah. first extra time period. Look good. England looked tired and flat. And then all of a sudden, you know, they go into the, the break in between and they come out in that second extra time period. And I thought that's when really England was on more of its front foot. Germany came out a little bit flatter and then the goal changed everything. And then credit to, to England, they closed out the last five minutes, I think, uh, really well. But Germany couldn't get a sniff after that. Well, I suppose now we look at, um, you know, the fact that we've got a year on before the World Cup. Some of these teams are definitely going to be bulldozing their way through that as well. But final thoughts just on the tournament on a whole and just oh my the amazing level of football we've yeah. seen. So fun. And they broke attendance records. They broke goal scoring records. I mean, it was just the tournament that I think sets the standard for what's needed in the women's game. And and it's something similar to what we did in 1999. You look at this as not just transformational for the sport and yeah. not just for women, but for the sport of football as a whole. But it honestly is something that's transformational. I still get people coming from different pockets of the earth who said I was there or I was watching or I was you know watching from Scotland or wherever you were. And it becomes transformational in that sense. And I don't think they'll realize yet what this tournament has created. But if you're a young kid watching this today, all of a sudden you want to play football. And yeah. that's a great thing for the sport. Absolutely special tournament and special final indeed. I think Georgia Stanway put it best when she said we need to stop talking about how big women's football is getting and just talk about how big it already is. And I think <laughs> that these ladies showed that today. Back to you guys. Thank you very much. Kay mentioned it before, but I'm sure when everybody saw that celebration from Chloe Kelly, they automatically thought of Brandy Chastain, of course, from 1999. Uh, she tweeted out, I see you. Well done. I enjoy, enjoy the free rounds of pints and dinners for the rest of your life from all of England. Cheers. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.